There's a fish. Nice. A tough spot to land fish. All right, let's see what we got him on. Looks like I got him on that pretty gun. All right, there we go. Got him in the net. That's one way to start a day. That was a beautiful fish. seam here, there, and there, and one over there. So I'm gonna work my way straight across the creek. The water's very clear. But luckily there's plenty of cover here. Because all this water's broken up. So I feel like I I have some concealment. I hooked into two or three in this section now. When they came off, they were kind of downstream hook sets. So I need to stop letting my drift go quite so far below me. There's actually a really nice deep pocket right here. I'm going to hit it before I start crossing the creek. That could hold a big fish. Right here. And right there. Let's try again. I like to get it up above the, the rapid so it drifts right in like a naturally occurring bug wood. There we go, right there. Nope, that was the bottom.
I know a lot of people avoid water like this. You can, you can, like, it takes a lot of time to wade in through here. But it can be very productive. I think it's very worth the effort. So I like to fish at the top of the water column down to the bottom. So my first trip is usually kind of hot. That's the bottom. There you go. Still got all my flies. That was a nice trip. There was a fish there, he got a good long look at it. One thing that's really, that I really like about tight lining is you can see like the currents that get fast, that get slow, the water gets steep and shallow, and I can dynamically adjust the speed of the flies and the depth of the flies based on the circumstances. I can change it on the fly where using an indicator is a little more restricting. So something I've been thinking about lately, I when I first started tight lining, I went right to 5X tippet, and the first two or three fish I hooked into, I broke off. I lost three rigs back to back. And so I instantly went back to 4X, and I stopped breaking off. But I've since gotten a lot better. So I'm wondering if the heavier 4X is costing me some fish that I might be able to catch now. I'm not sure, so. If I go quite a ways yet and don't catch one, I'm gonna switch to 5X. Let's see if that betters my odds. Rocks are slippery. Must be very careful. All right. Let's see if all this effort was worth it. There's a fish. Nice. Yes. So apparently it was worth it to get over here. Man, these guys are so stinking colorful. Got this one on the sexy waltz worm. 66, we got a 12 inch fish. Nice, beautiful, wild rainbow. See you later, my man. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, that's a strong fish, strong fish. There we go. So good, there we go. 
got him on the Pertagon. 14 incher. Yeah. See you later, dude. That was a good fish. Awesome. Yeah, buddy. Love it. Little 12 incher. Thanks for playing. Oh, good fish. Good fish. Oh, yeah. These guys are vigorous. Oh yeah, this guy's really fat, really colored up. Wow, this thing is gorgeous. Got this one on the waltz. Definitely the PB of the day right here. Holy cow, he's a fat boy. Take it easy, man. Yeah. This pocket water is full of fish. So those last two fish I caught, let's see if we can pick this apart. There's a nice, let me get the flies out of the water. So there's a nice seam here, and then there's some pillows. There's two submerged rocks. And I caught both those fish in front of both of those rocks. I'm slightly upstream of them. Got them both about a rod tip distance away. Just gotta go all the way to the end of your run. There's another one, same spot. Same spot. A little smaller, but that's cool. Got this one on the waltz. Calm down, little buddy. No, actually, this is the Pertagon this time. And these fish are colored up so nice. It's crazy. I love it when I can catch two fish in one exact spot. I think sometimes what happens is the, the bigger fish, the dominant fish, if he gets caught and he moves out of that lie, another fish will move into it. access point to be able to fish up into Box Canyon. No idea what to expect. I've actually uh, had a friend of mine tell me there's no fish in here, or not very many, so I don't know. This is the first hole right outside the parking lot. First one, well, I shouldn't say until I get it in the net, but. Got this one on the pretty gone. Beautiful wild 12 inch rainbow trout.
Yes. Yes. Oh. Darn. Ooh, that was a fish. Oh yeah, okay. This is crazy beautiful, but my ass is sore from falling earlier. Luckily, I had the dignity of not getting that on camera, but uh, oh man, my tailbone is rocking with pain right now, and I gotta hike out of here. There's not a whole lot of daylight left because I'm in a deep, dark canyon, so. I think I'm gonna head out. everyone thank you thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video to this little segment i like to call the recap rather than front load the video with a bunch of boring monologue i moved it here to the end of the video where frankly if you want to it's easy for you to leave and watch something more entertaining but if you're interested i share a quick river report and i answer any questions that may have come up uh, throughout the video the upper sack has about 15 miles of river you can access and there's a train track that kind of runs through the canyon right next to the the river the whole way so if you're willing to put in the work you can hike and access pretty much the entire river excluding a little bit of private property the first half of the day i started fishing at the soda creek access where you have these beautiful views of castle crags you can just look up the river and see the crags there looming over the water the whole time it's it's pretty stinking beautiful but i found most of the water in the section to kind of be a lot of pocket water there were a few runs that flowed into some bigger pools, but mostly pocket water. For the most part, I was fishing a number 14 sexy waltz worm on the point. And for my dropper, I was fishing in size 18 Pertagon. It was kind of a, a copper color bead head with a, like a red hot spot on it. Um, a very minimal fly, but I caught about half the fish on the waltz worm and about the other half on the Pertagon. So I would say um, they were keyed into both patterns pretty equally. After lunch, I made the drive up to Nay Springs where I planned to fish up the river into Box Canyon. Um, there at Nay Springs, I found that the, the river was kind of full of a lot of algae, so I kept hanging up on moss and green stuff on the bottom, so I had to constantly stop and clean my hooks off. And uh, I did catch a, one fish in that section and lost a couple others, but overall I found it kind of frustrating because, I mean, because of all the algae, it made wading in the water kind of difficult. It was slippery, and on the bank it was very overgrown and the bush was really thick, so it was hard to go up on the bank also. I found a game trail and was kind of weaving in and out of uh, bushes and vines trying to go up up the river. Um, so uh, the section right at Nay Springs is kind of challenging, but I did make it up into Box Canyon where it got really cool. Uh, there it's really rocky and basically there are these like cascades where the water flows over into these big deep pools. If you like fishing deep pools, uh, you should probably check it out. But um, I was getting tired by the end of the day and starting to get a little, you know, uh, short on patience. Um, I didn't catch any fish in there, but um, I would like to explore it more because being how difficult it is to, to move in through Box Canyon, um, there's probably not very many people that make the trek, so I, those fish have probably never seen a fly in their life, or very few. 
Um, so you, like in the spot I got to, I needed to have crossed the river to get upstream further because the, the walls of the canyon were too steep and I couldn't go any further. But I was running out of daylight and patience, so I decided to call it a day and head home. But um, definitely want to go back there when I'm feeling fresh and check it out and, and get get my Explorer hat on and go look for some of those fish in that canyon. As always, if you're curious about any of the camera gear or fishing gear, please check the description. I've got links to everything I use down there. I tried to keep this recap short because this video is a little longer, so if there's any questions I didn't answer, please be sure to ask it in the questions down below. If you'd like to follow along in real time, please consider checking out my Instagram. There you'll find my, my stories. I post pictures and videos there as they happen rather than waiting for me to post these longer videos. You can see what I'm doing and, and uh, interact with me there. If you enjoyed this adventure, please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks. Godspeed. I'm